Thank you, by the way. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Other Side of Addiction. I am your host, Al Richards. You guys, we got another wonderful show for you today. Today, we're going to be talking about using the pain in life as fuel for greatness and courage. And our guest today, Lori, is going to share with us her fuel of greatness and courage to get her out of what she went through in life. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our guest, Lori. Lori, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Al. I am so honored to be here. It is, I love watching the other side of addiction. I see so many people that I know and love, and it's it, it feels really good to be right here right now. Ah, uh, well, thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, and we've we've chatted a little bit you know, yeah. coming on the show and and I do my best not to pressure people because again, it's their time. And uh, I just happened to reach out to you to see if you knew anybody. And um, because I've been slacking on guests because I've been so busy. And I says, I don't know, maybe you're ready. And you came right back and said, yeah, I'm ready to do this. So yep. again, thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's do it. Yes. Let's do it. All, All right. right. So my gosh, going through your bio it's just I just can't imagine you know being the age that you were at and going through all the crap that you went through you know so um if you would share just with with our listeners kind of where things started for you and and we'll just go from there all right well um I really honestly think that that my Emotional pain probably started in really, really young childhood. You know, uh, my mom worked all the time. My parents divorced when I was two. And so she worked and worked and worked as much as she could so that she could afford to take care of us. I have I have four or three brothers that I lived with and grew up with. And so it seemed like she was working all the time. So I honestly felt this, um, I guess, need, desire for emotional connection. You know, the nurturing motherly role wasn't really there. And so honestly, my brothers and I, we ran amok as children. You know, we took care of each other the best we could. And um, we did have like the dreaded uncle who was a monster. He was very physically abusive, you know, really, really physically abusive. Um, there was some sexual abuse that went on. As, with us as children um and you know it kind of when you grow up in a place where the people that are supposed to love you you know hurt you or or do things sexually to you or whatever like that you kind of grow up thinking that, that's, that that's the normal thing and that that's what love's supposed to look like you know and so you know all, all through my childhood you know, to me, that was normal. And I always seem to be searching for some sort of emotional connection. And it ended up in my adult life coming out as my the way I behaved in in romantic relationships, and stuff like that. I, I viewed, and I'm just gonna say sex as love, you know, that's what I thought love was, I didn't yeah. understand that it's so much more than that. And it's so much more of a of a healthy thing that it took years and years and years and years and years for me to even see that it was any different than that. You know, I, I ended up in lots of, of relationships where that was the basis of what I thought was good. You know, that's where that's where I started thinking that that was a healthy relationship. And, you know. It kind of was the most important thing in my life for a really long time. You know, um, I'm just going to say my sexuality was like one of the defining factors of me until I honestly got through this last bit of treatment and, and drug abuse, which I'm just going to throw out there to the audience, too, that I started using at 14 years old. Um, I am now 54. So that is 40 years. Well, okay. For 40 years of my life, I was addicted. I had five and a half years in my, since I started using where I was sober. 
and four of which were in federal prison. And then the most recent year and a half in my life, I just barely on the 22nd of August celebrated 18 months in sobriety and recovery, you know? Right. So this is like, it's like brand new territory to me and it's really <laughs> awesome. But um, until I started actually seeking out, lo looking for the pain that was helping me keep making the same mistakes that I was self-sabotaging myself with, you know, I was, I was, not intentionally, but subconsciously, I thought I deserved all these, all these abusive relationships and I deserved to be thrown away. And I deserved, you know, all of it. I really did. I believe, I believed that. And it wasn't until honestly, I went to matter and started learning how to go back to the traumas and go back to them and, and how to Reperceive it, reevaluate it, rejudge it, and redecide it, and understand that right now I have the choice of how to how to look at any of that stuff that ever happened in my life, and it was so empowering and so it changed my life. Matter helped me learn how to save my own life, and yeah. actually how to become role models for the future generations in my family. You know. All that trauma that I talked about seems to be generational. That's how my grandparents, not necessarily the sexual part, but the, the physical abuse part was very, you know, grandparents did it. My, my parent, my mom and uncles were very physically abusive. You know, I ended up in relationships where my partner was very physically abusive, you know, and it seems to be generational. It's getting less and less <laughs> each generation. Thank heaven. Yeah. You know, right? and. Yeah, now I look at my grandchildren and, and I see that chains have been broken, you know, generational chains have been broken. And even if I see some of the same, um, I don't even know the word that I'm trying to say, the same situations, you know, as far as if they're, they're getting into relationships that might be a little bit of, you know, a little unhealthy, um, I see them recognize it recognize it work through it and either heal or go you know what I mean they you know relationships are worth working for however not at the cost of yourself right yeah, yeah. you know yeah. and it's it's crazy how you, how you just said earlier about the chains and and how 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 the stuff happens right mm -hmm. it goes it goes from family to family to family in the same family line if that makes sense it does and, it's also crazy because a lot of times when I do shows, I do two shows a day, right? Mm -hmm. Or on the day I record. And somehow, some way, they always seem to kind of mold into the same type of topic. Because we talked about that on the, the show this morning about yeah. uh, prison. You know, we talked about how broken our system is. However, a lot of the people that are in prison they came from families where they had other people in their family go to prison, right? Mm -hmm. and, and we grow up in our families and however it is that we're being raised, again, which is no fault of our parents because they were raised by their parents and, and so on and so on. And we really think, I don't know why we, why we do this as human beings, but we think that's how every household is raised. That's how, like you said, that's how life is supposed to be, right? This, this is how you're supposed to act when this doesn't happen or when this does happen. Yeah. This is who you're supposed to be around with. Right. And yeah. I think we're all searching for that love. And me too. I related love to different things as well growing yeah. up. Yeah. And when, and, and it's because it's what we know, right? Yeah, it's what we're programmed. Yeah. You know, when we're when we're between one and eight, we don't have any past experiences for us to judge upon. So whatever we are, you know, experiencing in those early young years, those are our core beliefs. Those are what make us. They are the starting point for all perceptions for the rest of our lives. Yeah. You know, and everything in some way. They're just new programs that are that are put on top of the original programs, you know, and you, 
it takes a lot, but you can learn to create new programs. Yeah. You know, you can't really delete your core beliefs. You can't. However, you can create new programs that will come up from your subconscious rather than the old programs, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. And that is, that is, that is so true, right? It's, uh, it's unplugging the bad neurons and plugging into good, healthy neurons because our subconscious, our subconscious can't determine what's real and what's fake. All it knows is it's, it's there, right? Yeah. So it grabs it and it stores it and it keeps it there until yeah. it's needed. And it does it for a purpose to protect us. True. That's I, what I absolutely for. agree. However, <laughs> we can't, we, we can't determine that, right? Until we start going somewhere or working with somebody and, and matter behavioral, you know, before they close their doors, they're really good at getting into the mind and getting people to start looking at things. And, and um, I, I still am a huge supporter of Janie Marvin and mm -hmm. Whitney and Kobe and those guys there. I just love those people to death and they've done amazing work and Janie's still doing amazing work. You know, even though the doors may have closed, she's doing a lot of other things. And yeah, when we start understanding how, how our mind works, it helps us. I'm actually in training right now with Janie with the holographic human their technology. I, I am about to take my finals in it to become a coach in holographic human. Oh my gosh. Well, good for you. That is awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. I love it. When when I started, okay, let me give you a little another little backstory, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when I left my my last marriage, it was very domestically violent, and I ended up in a in a domestic violence shelter. Um, that didn't last long. I was in addiction. It didn't last long, you know. And I honestly did not accept the help that was given to me, and I ended up being homeless for like six years, couch surfing, staying wherever I could, you know, leaning on my family members that weren't so sick of me that you know they'd tell me no. <laughs> um, and I, my psychosis, my mental illness and my psychosis had gotten so bad. I couldn't play a game of solitaire. You know, my, the processes of my brain, I couldn't put the numbers in numerical order to play a game of solitaire. And it took me like four years to get my way through the application for Medicaid, to be able to get some insurance, to get into a treatment center, you know? I knew I, that's what I wanted to do. However, mentally, I don't feel I had the capacity at that time. You know, I was in full-blown psychosis, chasing stuff down the street in the middle of the night. It, you know, Lori was, was losing it. I really, really was. Wow. And finally, I, I, I made it through. This was like a triumphant moment for me. I, I ended up getting Medicaid and it felt amazing, right? So then I went through the whole, oh, I would call treatment centers and they'd say, oh, we don't take your insurance. Oh, we don't take your insurance. Oh, no, you know, no, we don't take that insurance. And I just, it just felt like I just get, kept getting kicked and kicked and kicked and kicked and kicked. And then a friend of mine in Reno, Nevada, however that happened, she sent me this thing about matter behavioral health from Reno. And I called and they said, yes, they said, yes, we'll help you. All you got to do is show up. And so I, showed up I was still using I went to the building and I was so scared that I texted the guy my case manager that was there Bradley I think you know Bradley Haas yeah. um I texted him I'm like I'm here I'm in the parking lot I'm scared to death and he walked outside grabbed my hand and took me in there and sat next to me and I went through withdrawals while I was in IOP before I went into treatment and so I was lucky enough to not I went through the detox process before I went down to Mount Pleasant and I was so beyond grateful for them telling me, yes, Lori, I will help you. And the first day, even intoxicated on drugs, I went in there, my eyes huge when I was watching and hearing what they were doing and the processes and the techniques. And I was just blown away. And this is my jam. This is the instruction book that I've been waiting for my whole life to figure out how how and why my brain worked and my thinking it, yeah. yeah absolutely incredible program love it love it love it love it love it yeah i i've gone to i went to one of their events that they did here in sandy a couple of years ago and uh 
one thing that I was very impressed with, I believe, if I remember right, the name of it was the Butterfly Butterfly Walk. Is that Butterfly, what it was? yeah. Yeah, that was, they had a volunteer come up and I was just so impressed of, impressed of how that whole process worked because it really gets you thinking, mm -hmm. right? And what's crazy, what I've learned a lot about doing these shows and interviewing the hundreds of people that I've interviewed is this stuff really seems so no brainer. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, it's a no brainer. However, we're so lost in the daily 3d world that we're not opening our flipping eyes and yeah. our mind to see it. Yeah. And it is, it's so easy. So, so easy. Once you learn how to do it, I think that's what it is as we, Okay, as we grow up, we seem to learn our creative ability and forget how to use our imagination. The world, the world gives us experiences that that get us jaded. You know, oh, I didn't like that, so you know, dun dun deleted, dun dun deleted. You know, and it, I think it jades us, and and we forget the beauty of pretending. We forget the beauty of imagination. Of you know, sitting somewhere and just imagining a story and it being and it being a beautiful thing childlike wonder is the most awesome thing to me you know you remember when you were a kid and everything was possible everything oh, yeah. everything you know and you couldn't have talked me into anything was different <laughs> you know it and i work really hard on bringing that back into the way i live my life you know to look at everything as a possibility to be open and work on being understanding of of different viewpoints of you know somebody will tell me something and then if it's not something i've heard or something that i've got a program that tells me no that's not okay i work really hard at opening my mind to hearing what they have to say and i might learn something yeah you know i i probably will learn something i will definitely learn some understanding of where another person is in their life and that's always a beautiful thing you know, that always brings wonderful experiences to me. Yeah, abso yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, you talked about the emotions and we, we touched on it a little bit this morning. And society has got us believing that we're not allowed to feel our emotions. We're supposed to be happy-go-lucky. Our butts are supposed to smell like roses all the time and rainbows and sprinkles are going over us because we're going to be damned or ridiculed or or talked about if we cry if we show depression and mm -hmm. all those things are a gift every single one of them is a gift and and god gave us all these emotions for a reason right, right? it's to help us grow and and i'm a i'm a huge believer now especially with all the stuff i've gone through and the training i've gone through and and learning from amazing guests like yourself it's okay to feel these emotions. The trick is just don't stay there, right? Allow mm -hmm. them to happen, take a hold of them, meet them head on, go through what you need to go through, get up, dust yourself off, get moving forward. Yep. Go through it. Not over it, not under it. Feel it, you know, even on the hard ones, even on the hard days that really, really suck, you know, work on calming your breath down and, and just saying for a minute, you know what? Why am I feeling this way? What is it bringing up in me? You know, what what is the reason behind my emotional reaction, both positive and negative? You know, you can you can dissect it, for lack of a better word, even the positive emotions just as well. And it brings a whole new value to it. You know, yeah. that's that's one of the ways that I use my pain in my life as fuel. You know, I, I really, really work at using the hard stuff and looking at it, even if it's in my past, 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 I really work hard at looking at it and trying to find a lesson from it, not accept that, you know, what bad things have ever happened to me because that, that's not okay. However, I do believe that I can learn something from it, you know, in every aspect of my life, you know, the positive, the negative, all of it. And yeah, and yeah, I get this, you know, especially if it's hard ones, I get this, um, excuse me, I get this emotional something in my belly, right? 
And when I recognize that physical sensation, I, I use it as a cue to, to, to close my eyes even and think to myself, okay, well, why am I feeling this? What is it bringing up in me? And is there something I can be learning from it? Is it, you know, that I need to go, you know, or is it, um, okay, well, I haven't healed that, that relationship with my mom or, you know, or something like that. If, if I dissect what I'm thinking about it and it helps turn that feeling in my belly, I turn it into a ball of light and I make it bigger and bigger and bigger and I come out shining from it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and you said something very key. And again, it's something that a coworker and I, we talked about just this past, actually a week ago, not this past week, but the week before that, there's a lesson in everything that happens to us in life. And instead of reacting on it with certain emotions and different things like that, which again, it's okay for us to feel those emotions, go back and look what there's a reason this is happening. What is that reason? Right. And we may not figure it out the same day or even right. within the same week. However, there is a lesson there you know and with you going through matter and seeing all the stuff that they helped you with and how to start unplugging all the unhealthy neurons and plugging in a new neurons healthy neurons talking about using your pain as the fuel what did you find out for you i mean what and i don't know if you have figured them all out and it's okay if you haven't yet right because it's maybe it's not their time to surface mm -hmm. What did you find out? What was the pain that was inside you that you were suffering from so much that was causing you to take the life path that you took? Was it not feeling the love that you talked about, not feeling nurturing mother's love, you know, and, and of course, I'm sure the abuse had to do with it, whether it was physical, mental, sexually, whatever. I mean, that, right. that would just that would affect anyone, right? Yeah. Anyone in the right mind, you know? So yes. what was it for you? Um, okay, when you ask that question, I get this moment of realization, okay? okay. Um, when I very first started going to Matter, we did this thing called breath, breath work with Dr. Tom Dreschel. He, he does this thing at Matter called breath uh -huh. work. And we did it the very first, I think it was like day two or three when I was going to IOP. And okay, this is this is the best way to describe it. Okay, I you you hyperventilate and stuff, and and I had gotten to where I pierced the veil of my subconscious. I too much to describe, you know, to explain how you get there. However, I pierced the veil of my subconscious, and I saw it was like this cartoon silhouettes of cartoons. Okay, and it was like little kid grow up, grow up, grow up, grow up, and it was in my brain I was thinking it was the making of a superhero okay that was what the cartoons were depicting was the making of a super superhero at the end there's you know a, a grown-up person flag or a cape flying in the wind and stuff right and I was crying and I was crying and the next thing I know Al I was I was standing there and I was looking and there was like a silhouette of a stairwell and I had this knee this really strong sense and I bent down and I put my hand out like this into the darkness it's gonna make me cry okay. I put my hand into the darkness and this little hand grabbed my hand and I got to pull this little person out of the darkness and to me that that's what it is is the recognition that the things that I have gone through in my life give me an ability to recognize and to kneel down and put out my hands and say, Hey, I'm right here. I can help you and, and help. That's, that's what I've gained out of all of it is that, yeah, stuff happened to me, but you know what? It helps me recognize where I can help someone else. Well, honestly, I don't know if you've heard this on any of the shows that you've listened to and, and I've used it a lot and there's a reason why I use it a lot. You know, when Jesus started going around spreading the word about the gospel and, and different things like that, he picked the imperfect ones as, as, as his apostles, apostles, right? Everyone that I have met that's in the recovery community 
and have just fallen in love with how they look at life and 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 I look up to them because of what they've gone through what they've what they've conquered they're the angels now right you guys are the angels walking the earth putting your hand out grabbing someone else's hand just like how you just described it we're all helping each other pull that inner child back out that we stuffed away for so so long yeah and and we didn't do it on purpose we did it to protect us right again that subconscious kicks in doesn't know what's real what's not it's doing its job it's protecting us however it's like I used to be a huge ball player. I, I loved playing ball until I've just blown my shoulders out so much. And it would be like throwing my mitt in a closet. And then as time goes, I'm throwing ski stuff on top of it, winter things, summer things, you know, all kinds of stuff on top of it. You completely forget about it. It's buried. Mm -hmm. And then one day you decide to clean your closet, cleaning your mind up, and you start pulling one little teeny thing out. And you're like, oh, I remember I did this with this. You know, this wasn't a good memory. Let's toss this out. Oh, right. this one wasn't either. Let's throw this in the garbage. Or, <laughs> or maybe let's donate this to Goodwill or something. Anyway, <laughs> right? And then yeah. all of a sudden we find that glove. We find that inner child in us again. And I've done some training where two trainings now that that's what they worked on with me. They're like, bring that little boy back, you know? And, and it was hard for me. And I, I sat in chairs and it was through Zoom, nothing face to face. And I had tears just rolling down my face because yeah. I was wanting that little boy to come back out in me. And they want to. The, the Our inner child wants to be, in my opinion, our inner child wants to be a main part of our lives, of our, it's so easy to love when you're a kid. You know, it's so easy to, to share and imagine and create things, you know, yeah. the ability of a child's brain and imagination and, and giving is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. You know, they believe that's it. They believe, you know, and then believe next to love, in my opinion, is the most powerful force in the universe. If you believe it, you can achieve it. You can make it a reality. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you talked about working with Dr. Tom and yeah. I've, I've met Dr. Tom, a, a phenomenal man. And at that event that I went to that I talked about up there in Sandy or Cottonwood Heights, it was one of those areas. He broke everything down into the fractals. Love it. I, I we had that lot. group too. <laughs> that is amazing, right? I yeah. Mean, and and for those who don't understand fractals, and, and I'm probably going to slaughter this, but I'm going to do my best to explain it. You got this, Al. <laughs> if you, you put stuff under like a microscope and you start breaking it down, everything that you see is broken down. It's, it's magnified more and more and more, right? And there's all these shapes to it. And I mean, seriously, this is no BS. There's all these shapes, all this beauty that is involved with it. and you can continue to constantly break it down even more and more and more and it seems like the beauty of it expands it gets bigger and bigger and bigger even though you're looking at something at a thousand times or five thousand times under a microscope to where you can't see with the naked eye but when you see it with that it's huge just like the universe yeah, it is. And it's it's repeated patterns too. Repeated, you know, yes. Repeated patterns. But when it's when it goes down, it's the same thing as when it was big. But oh yeah, blown away by that group. It was incredible. I love yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Very cool stuff. I I I just gotta say I loved every second that I spent at Matter. Every second of it. I learned so much from every minute of it. And and yeah. how long did you spend there? I was there 90 days. 90 days. Okay. I, yeah. I was one of the last graduates. Wow. Before they closed their doors. Yeah. Holy cow. I graduated May 28th of last year. Yeah. Because I say it was only about a year ago when they closed the doors. Yeah. 
I love it. And working with Janie on the on the certification program to be a coach, <laughs> she is a hoot, and I love her so <laughs> much. You know, oh, it was great. Oh, and you know, while we're mentioning matter, we went down for the grand opening, and just even driving up there, walking through the door, seeing all the people that are still there and still willing to help you learn how to fix yourself. It was, I loved it. It was so cool. So cool. Yeah. 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 Very, very good people there. Very yeah. good people. And, and it was, it was an honor and a blessing to have met Jamie. And uh, she was a guest on our show a long time ago, probably around the first year that we started the show. And, and so was Whitney. Yeah. And Colby's been on the show. Um, that's how I met Jackie as well. Yeah. Right. Cause it was, it was all part of it. Jackie was with them at that time and just amazing individuals again, who are now the angels like yourself, Lori, who are going out there, putting their hand out and going, you're struggling. I know what you're going through. I've been there. Yeah. How take may I hand. help you? Yeah. Come take on. my hand, take my hand. It's, it was so cool. I really want to, if I ever start a business of my own, that's going to be like the, 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 my business cards can have a stairwell with a little hand coming out of the dark. It's going to be cool. <laughs> that's a you know, great that's idea. Good. That's another thing that I love about being a CPSS and working at UAPS and stuff too, is that is what I get to do with my life now, is I get to be that person that has been where you're at, um, understands where you're at, can be an advocate when you feel like you are being bombarded by stigma, you know, the stigma that goes along with when you, you know, say you're an addict right now and you go to the hospital for something that you feel is really serious and they see that you're addicted and they don't they don't give you the time that you that I feel they deserve. Yeah. So I get to go, I've actually done it a couple of times, Alan. It's been very rewarding. I get to go in with with clients that I work with, go into the hospital, and I tell the people right at the triage, I'm like, I'm a CPSS and I am here to help these this person be heard. And it's incredible. You know, yeah. the 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 value that they give to people when they know somebody is standing up for them you know it, it's really it I love my jobs I have like three jobs and I love oh. all of them I work at the VOA the Center for Women and Children you know I get to be on the front lines of of people just beginning the their recovery story you know just barely getting sober and going through the probably the darkest times of the whole journey you know oh my gosh getting my body through this get my body through this just get the drugs out of my system get the alcohol out of my system so that I can start getting my brain to to function in a way where I'm starting to create my own dopamine and my own serotonin again and you know I get to see the spark of hope ignite in so many people's eyes and hearts and it is so rewarding I, so, I like so that. rewarding. The spark yeah. of light. I, I yeah. really like that. Yeah. Yeah. The spark of hope, you know? Yeah. It's 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 what people in recovery get to share. The spark of hope. Yeah. And absolutely. it's big. It's oh, really it big. big. It's big, big, big. <laughs> you know, I, I was I was I was talking with somebody this this past week about the recovery community. And, and I told him, I said, you know, I've had some good friends in the past. However, nothing, nothing compared to the people that I've met in the past two and a half years. The recovery community is a community that none of you on the outside will understand unless you put yourself into it. Even volunteering, right? Just come out and even volunteer. Be a part of it come and help at some of these events because it will literally change your life. It, it will, you will actually see who these individuals really are. And, and they are the most inspirational and amazing people you'll ever meet. And the reason why they've been in the dark place of life and they dug some pretty deep holes and it took courage, strength, faith, and help from a higher power, whatever their higher power is, to get them to where they're at today. 
that's why you see them enjoying life so much because right. <laughs> they were on the verge of death, right? Yeah. They teach us. All you individuals teach the rest of us how life is supposed to be lived and how it's supposed to be looked at. And it's not all bad. Yes, there's some bad things there, but it's not all bad. We need to quit looking at life through a effing straw, split mm -hmm. that straw, and start opening up our vision to all the amazing things out there and all the amazing people, and also to get rid of the stigma. Yeah. You know, because if the majority of us, which there's a lot of us, went through life and had to go through the troubles that a lot of our guests have gone through and the turmoils, mm -hmm. I've said many times on the show, hell, if I went through what you went through, Lori, I'd probably be doing the same thing you did too. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And honestly, I think a lot of a lot of addiction is people who have been through some really hard times doing their best to self-medicate honestly I, I i don't believe drug addiction is i believe it's a side effect of traumas i believe it's it's not the main problem i believe it's a side effect of of what has happened to them and their lack of knowledge or lack of experience or you know any of that to be able to handle it in a different way because i know for me if i would have known a different way I probably would have taken it, yeah. you know? Yeah, if I would have known that I could get some sense of relief from the hurt that I was feeling inside, from the, you know, why doesn't anything work out for me? How come I just keep getting into these abusive relationships and stuff, you know? <clears throat> and then when I'm in it thinking, oh my gosh, how do I get out of this? Is this right? I don't know if this is even, you know, feels pretty normal, but it's not something that's making me happy. <laughs> you know oh, yeah. yeah yeah you know it's it's all a learning curve <laughs> yeah it <laughs> yeah. definitely is so in your bio you talked about having a conversation with your daughter yeah and that's what shows you to go the direction that you went in is that correct it is that was the crux of my whole family knew I was using everybody knew I was using I wasn't hiding it you know I was on a self-destruct mission because I couldn't figure out a way to get myself out of it, okay? And I had started shooting up. I had started using needles to get high. And at that time, I was staying in her trailer at her house, you know, and she just came up to me one day. I don't know how she got the, the strength to do it, but she came up to me and, and looked me straight in the face and asked me, Mom, are you using needles? And as, as easy as it seemed, to me, for her to ask that was as easy as it was for me to give her an honest answer right then and there. Yes, I am. She dropped to her knees. I dropped to my knees next to me. We hugged each other, and she helped me start calling places to get to get into treatment. Wow. Yeah. I mean, before, my family had dealt with me for so long, you know, being an addict and and saying I'm gonna quit and and you know not doing it or making it a couple of weeks and not doing it you know the typical relapse 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 um that they had when I would ask for help they'd just be like yeah okay you know and it I don't know I guess it was the fact that she looked at me using needles as such a next step to my mom's not gonna make it. She, if if she keeps going this way, she's not going to make it. She's going to be lost, like like my big brother was. Okay. Yeah. And she, and she fell to her knees. She called the BOA to get me in there. <laughs> and it was the the same day that she had got me a bed at the BOA that Matter had called me back and said, "Yes, we'll help you." It was uh, awesome. And that was just the start. That got the ball rolling, yeah. and, and you've not looked back since. No, I haven't. Well, that's not true. Okay, I did have one little tiny relapse when Matter yeah. closed its doors. You know, when that happened, it hit me really hard. You know, I had, I have such faith and belief in 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 the program and in the teachings and in all of it, and it just hit me really hard. And and isn't it funny 
that I left my IOP and I went to my storage shed and drugs fell in my lap, literally like fell off a shelf into my lap. And I didn't win that battle. However, two hits after that, I won that battle. You know, it didn't take me even a day of being in relapse mode to snap back, snap back into Lori, what are you doing? And got rid of it all that day and never looked back. Holy cow. Have That's amazing. Back. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, I mean, that had to be pulling at you really strong, right? Because it it doesn't take much for, yeah, for that stuff to grab a hold of you and and start getting you thinking in those old patterns again. Yeah, yeah. It before before my the treatment at Matter, I I would have been full blown again, you know. And it was another response to an emotional trauma of something that I believed in so much all of a sudden is gone out of my life. And I was like, okay, well, how do you handle this? And it fell in my lap and yep. Slight misstep, slight misstep. Just, I didn't even take a whole baby step. <laughs> it was just a, <laughs> a baby step. And I got my shit back together. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. And rolled with it. And I've been rolling with it ever since. It's really cool. Well, and look at all the amazing things that you're doing, you know, and and I hope our listeners are getting this, you know, it, it sounds like you've had a lot of great moments happening in your life right now. Yeah. And, and I actually said this when I went out and spoke at Red Barn a few, I don't know, it was probably, I guess, maybe a month ago now. And, and I was telling them my greatest moments didn't come from my greatest moments. My greatest moments came from my failures, my defeats, the, the times life kicked me in the butt you know, mm -hmm. big time. And I mean, even going back 14 years, losing my job, you know, right. in 2009, a job that I love dearly. And, and, and um, yeah, however, yeah. it brought me to so many other type blessings. Of course, we, we don't see it when it's happening again, but if we, if we stop and smell the roses and think, okay, what's the lesson behind this and wait for the journey to happen, then we look back as, as my friend Nick likes to say, we connect the dots backwards and we go, okay, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I know it is so cool. I, I look at the last 18 months and it's almost mind blowing the change in the person that I was then and the person that I was, that I am now. Yeah, I bet. You know? Yeah. And it feels really, really good. Really, <laughs> really, really good. It does like, like the light to remember last night. It felt so good to be there. And, you know, I saw so many people that I knew from even back in the day, you know, in the beginning of this whole uh, adventure, I saw them and to see them at recovery events, woo, you know, and see people that I've met in the community since I started doing this. It's, it's like a family. And oh, yeah. I want to go back to what you were saying about the people in recovery, the gratitude level, the humility level, the kindness level in so many people that I surround myself these days with these days is a godsend. You know, it shows me faith in humanity. It shows me faith in, in the person next to me. You know, I recently tried to go get a normie job. <laughs> I made it five whole shifts <laughs> and I, I went straight back to the recovery. You know, it, it's, it feels good. Even, even in the depths of, some of my clients' worst days, their, their gratitude level and, and their humility and their genuine person show so much. And it's, it's a really big blessing to me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can see I can see why it is because it's it's been a blessing for me. I yeah. mean, seriously, it, it's been huge. And and I have met a few people and had a few people on my show who who battled with addiction as well. And um, one friend of mine, Chris, he actually owned his own business mm -hmm. and uh, he was in the depths of his addiction, even when he had his business. And he went to a place called White Tree Medical. And they really, really helped him. And he was so impressed with what they did to help him get off the opioids mm -hmm. that he sold his business and went to work for them because he goes, 
this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to now help other people. Isn't that, so, <laughs> isn't that amazing? That. So it's just exactly what you're talking about, right? Yeah. 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 It's that beauty that we get in the lived experience of it. You know, yeah. it is. I mean, what better way, what better way to serve someone if, as if you've been there? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's very, very cool. Well, in serving others, that's, that's really one of the things we are supposed to do while we're here, you know, serving others. My, my friend Clay from the other side Academy, you know, uh, he said his new high was volunteering and helping as many people as possible. And he says it, it's a high that I never got off any drugs or alcohol. Right. I can relate. Absolutely. I can relate. You know, <laughs> the events that I go to, the, the, it's that the high I get is when I see that spark of hope. You know, when, when you just, you're talking to somebody and just all of a sudden, like, boom, it happens and they, they have this something in their heart that just opened up and they're like, oh my gosh, I can do this. Oh my gosh, I do matter. You know, somebody does care about me, you know, incredible. <laughs> and I, yeah. You know what? <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. What a, what a great blessing in my life, you know, and in, in everybody's life that, that gets to see it, that gets to be a part of it. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. and, and with, even with you saying that, I think it probably, and this is just me, how I'm visualizing it. You see that they finally have love for themselves right? They finally, they finally for once in their life are giving themselves a hug yeah. going. And you said it, I'm worth it. Right. Yeah. However, but also to have that self gratification going, damn it, this is who I am. And I'm proud of who I am yeah. and watch out world. I'm, I'm yeah. coming to make some changes. Right. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I heard a saying that says, We're going to love you until you can love yourself. You know, and that's a big thing because, especially in early addiction, you know, we have been talked into and we talk ourselves into the fact that we don't matter, you know, and showing someone that they do matter in. It could be the tiniest of ways, you know, showing them that somebody does love them, helps them gain that I am worth it. And I'm going to figure out how I can make it bigger. You know, I'm going to figure out how I can help myself the next time, the next time, the next time, and just grow their hope and their love in themselves bigger and bigger and bigger. It's, it's vitally important that we love people until they can love themselves. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Where do you where do you see yourself, Lori? Here, let's just say in the next couple of years. Where where do you see yourself going with all this? Um wow. Wasn't expecting that question. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, it just popped in my head. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's talk about it. Okay, time to think about it. Um, I right now am very dedicated to helping the Utah Association of Peer Support Specialists become a huge impact in the community and and I want it I want to help it grow you know not only is it something that my wonderful big brother hero Brian you know it that's his like thing that he came up with and to be a part of that is great and I that is really my focus is to as far as my career goes is to work at UAPS and help it grow and grow and grow and grow I envision myself being in a beautiful wonderful home that I have a, a vision board of um having family dinners with my whole big family you know everybody's in the kitchen the kids are running around screaming and, and you know we're making the turkey and my daughter's over there potato rice and some potatoes and making gravy and you know all the decorations that's a big thing for me a grandma's house my grandma's house was the one place, both my grandmothers, my mom's and my my dad's mothers were my safe place as a child. That's where I could just go be Lori and not have to be scared about anything, you know? And so that's, that's my halo is to have a place like that for 
my grandchildren, my great grandchildren, you know, praying that I get, to, well, not too early, but I'd like to see some great grandchildren. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I want, my desire is to have a home that everyone that I love feels comfortable to come to and that the door's always open and I'm all, I'll always pour a cup of coffee and everybody feels welcome and laughs and smiles and cries and, and talks and shares and helps, you know, does gardens. I want to garden and I want to put up salsa and chili verde every year and, you know, do canning things with my family. That, that's what Lori's life looks like. That sounds like an amazing life to me. Yeah. Decorated yeah. to the hilt for holidays, like put Chevy Chase's movies to shame kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> the Christmas story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. You know, just yeah. absolutely crazy for all the holidays, you know, even Valentine's Day. I like to whip it up and decorate. That is that is cool. Yeah. You know, and and with with everything that you've gone through in your life, Lori, and and all the hard work that you've put into making a change and and figure out who Lori is, right? Who is Lori as as an individual? And and you know, I'm also a firm believer that we work on ourselves, but that's something that we will continue to do, right? There is no finish line. There's goals we can hit. However, yeah. when it comes to working on ourselves, there's always something that we can that we can fine tune and and yeah. make better you know so I, I i what's that we get to we get to that's we it. Get to. yeah that's, it. that's exactly how to put it we get to you know yeah. and, and you deserve it right everyone deserves it we all deserve yeah. this yes yeah. we do what this life this life is an, a journey that can be unlike any other experience that we can imagine and we get to make it okay best way to predict your future is to create it and we can create it to be whatever we want it to be yeah you know? I'll, I'll ditto i'll second that one because it that is yeah. so true right and and it goes both ways we yeah. can create it to be the most wonderful life or we can also create it to be the most crappiest life right yeah yeah, yeah. and it's what we get to do yeah and, and the figuring it out of okay I didn't like that so much we're going to change it over here the figuring it out is the beautiful part of it the experience of it all you know that's, that's well said I'm glad that you said that because it really is right it is yeah yep. yeah because we we can throw out anything that we don't want that's the beauty of it and however <laughs> however for some reason we always think we have to hang on to it right it's almost it's almost like that series hoarders yeah. Right. Yeah. Why do we want to hang on to crap that's not serving us? Yeah, we I agree. Do. We do. And it's because we don't know how to throw it away. We don't know how lack to get of knowledge it. and understanding. You yeah. know, lack of knowledge and understanding, because if we knew better, we probably would. Right. right. You know, honestly. And so it's about seeking out and listening to other points of view and seeking out. And when you hear something that that you know, might make you question something, open your mind to hearing it. You know, it could enlighten you in some way. Yeah. It yeah. could. It you definitely know? could. Could be a and, great thing. And and again, listening, listening to others and watching kids, you know, you brought that up earlier in the show. And I think watching kids is huge. I, I remember seeing a picture when um I had my first granddaughter. Mm -hmm. And it was a picture of her and my daughter at a sliding glass window watching it snow and the look on that little girl's face because it's the first time that she has seen snow you know the the amazement the wonderment i mean what is your magic right yeah pure I mean, magic it's, right it's there falling out of the sky however yeah. we lose that as we as we grow it, we we totally lose it and we need we talked about bringing the inner child out we need to keep that inner child we need to bring that inner child out and we need to imagine like you said that you do sometimes right you just close your eyes and you imagine you know oh my gosh I don't know how many times I imagined as a little boy sleeping outside with my friends closing my eyes and going 
oh, I can see myself flying like Superman and going up to space, right? And I mean, I can vision I do that now. <laughs> yeah, right. I do that now. I blow <laughs> bubbles. I skip. I play ring around the rosies. I make it a point to play. I do. I consciously, physically go outside and I go on adventures. I make up little treasure hunts when I'm in the mountains. Oh, let's see if I can find this. And I go and I make a little path to, through the trees and I do it to keep my inner child right here and right here. And so that it helps my creative mind just keep going and my imagination just keep going and it helps. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, something that I did about uh, three, four weeks ago, I went out to the desert and it's, it's way out there past Wendover in between Wendover and Wells. And my sister's boyfriend has some property out there and we went out there to go look for arrowheads. Now mm -hmm. I hadn't done that since I was a little boy, right? We used to go right. to Vernal and out to Robin's roost and places like that and look. And I tell you what, I didn't find really anything a couple I found a broken one I think on Saturday but on Sunday there's this um um little teeny piece of Odyssey which that's what I have around my neck right love it teeny piece sticking out and I reached down and I grabbed it when I grabbed it I pulled it out and there's this little teeny arrowhead about this big and I mean it is almost perfect except one little teeny piece at the bottom that's broken off of it right and my little child came out that day because I'm looking at that in the palm of my hand and I'm just going, this is a baby arrowhead. Was it a kid that made this, right? How long has this arrowhead been buried under the dirt and it, just enough between weather and different things where just a little teeny piece showed its face? What's the history behind it? Did there, was there an arrow attached to it? And, and right. I'm thinking, cowboy and Indian days right or was it you know did did someone shoot out a rabbit or or a bird with it because it's small I mean all this look at that kid coming out as you're explaining it Al I feel right? the little kid and you going oh my gosh look what yeah. I found I love it that is so that's cool that's exactly what it was that's exactly how it felt you know I and love I, it I could even get a, and look around and I could see a little Indian me even like running around out there. Right. And with my yeah. bow and shooting at rabbits and different things. And it was, it was the coolest thing that I felt in a long time. Yeah. I love it. I love that you experienced that. That I felt that as you're describing it, I was right there with you. Al. <laughs> <laughs> that is cool. It is cool. Very, very awesome. So man, we have been going an hour already, believe it or not uh it goes by quick doesn't it it goes yes by really it does fast. yes it does so Lori, is there something that you wanted to share that you didn't get an opportunity to and and if not or even if there is please share it and then also what would be your main your main message for our listeners um i okay it was it was completely different than this when we started this whole thing but i what I would like to invite people watching this right now to do is get in touch with your inner child. Get in touch with that little thing, that little memory inside your heart. Go on, go skipping. You know, who cares if you're a grown up and you feel like an idiot skipping down the road? Start somewhere and get and get in touch with the little kid that that lets you not feel so heavy in life you know get it do something to play and let your inner child come out and see the beauty and the magic in the world again that's what i'd like him to know i love and that, that you can use all the pain in your life to help that little kid go on great adventures i and love become it i'm really strong that's that's a powerful message a real powerful message because we don't have to stay stuck, right? And and bringing that inner child out does help us as adults. Isn't it crazy? We're we're adults, and we're going back to wanting to be a child to help us become better adults. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Look at the gifts that we get. <laughs> it's amazing. It's it amazing. amazing. I love it. Yeah, Al. Thank you so much. Thank you for this conversation. I had such a great time talking with you. 
Uh, thank you. Thank you for your time and, and, and your vulnerability and sharing a part of your life that wasn't all that great, right? That to see, however, to see who you are today, I mean, it's amazing. If, if I wouldn't have met you through the recovery center and I just met you somewhere in a grocery store, I would have never, ever thought that you had gone through what you've gone through just because of how you hold yourself today, how you view the world how you see yourself, right? And you just see, you see the love and, and, and the ambition behind you. I mean, I sat by you yesterday at a light to remember and, and, you know, I was listening to you and, and watching some of your actions and, and I'm like, man, this, this girl's full of life. I mean, mm -hmm. seriously, she is full of life. And that was even before I really read your bio. I didn't read your bio till today. And I'm amazing. going, this is flipping amazing. It's working. It's Woo, working. It's fun for. <laughs> it is working. That's for sure. Yeah, I love it. Well, Lori, again, thank you so much for, for being on the show. And, and when we sign off, don't, don't leave because I want to chat with you just for a second. But okay. uh, again, thank you for your time. Thank you for all your love. Thank you for what you are doing for the recovery community, for helping other individuals in their journey, because it's people like yourself that's making a difference. So you just keep doing it. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Thank you very, very much for having me. It's been a great pleasure. I've loved it. <laughs> Absolutely good. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> All right. Everybody else, make it a great day. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, thank you again. Thank you to all our listeners, all our guests, our guest co-hosts, and uh, our sponsors. My gosh, thank you to all you sponsors. None of this would be possible if it wasn't for every single one of you. You guys hear me say this at the end of every show. This show is happening because of you. It's not because of me. It's because of you. You guys are the ones that's making it possible. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And uh, we're going to leave you with this. Oh, guys, before I sign off, mark your calendars, October 7th. From 1 to 6, the Miller Free Enterprise Building, the third Healing Utah Success Summit. Come out and be inspired and educated and hear some amazing stories of resilience and triumph. And uh, bring some tissues because I guarantee you will, you will have some tears shed. Happy tears, though. Happy tears. So we love you guys. And remember this, addiction is giving up everything for one thing and re 